this works anyway. Um, yeah, man. Just uh, trudging along trying to get our technology and stuff and our products together so we can try to get those out the door and uh, earn some more funds to get out there in the field. Got a few few things going on. We're thinking about tomorrow morning, like 4 a.m., heading out and um, doing a little bit of fossil recon. Yeah, it's a Triassic bed that we know are some teeth. And so actually, it's a really, really cool, controversial spot because I got uh, a phytosaur skull out of there that had the arteries and the, the blood vessels and everything still had the color. And we got the gl soft glands. Yeah. Yeah, that was it was encased in clay and we had to harden it and to bring it up. But it had still had the color of all the all the flesh and everything right down to the out right down to the outer stuff. So Joe, J Joe Taylor of a uh, Blanco Fossil Museum has all that stuff to this day. Yeah. Yeah, there was also fish that there little purple pink purplish pink ones and little gold like goldfish. Um, they were probably fry, you know, a young babies but anyway they still had the scales and meat and this is 380 million years old yeah so oh it's just uh Yeah, I'm running a lot of stuff right now. I'm surprised it's working. Well, I was just uh, relating to Jack. I might be going out on a little fossil recon here the next few days. And um, and it was to an area where we had recovered. I, I put, did a post on Facebook and showed just one little fragment of a piece. But we had recovered um, all the soft body tissue with the upper maxilla to a, a phytosaur, kind of like a crocodile, about 380 million years old. And... Um, they still had the color from all the soft glands and organs in the artery. So I showed a picture of an artery the other day that was still red, the same color red from the original blood. And there's no real true mineralization. It's just what was in the blood and the blood itself that, that hardened. And the, uh, but the nerves were there like that and the lymph glands and, and everything. And it was all part of a skull that was encased in what was like clay. And it would, uh, it, I guess it just cooked down, but it retained the color. And um, so we, we had pulled that. And then as well at that same location, we also pulled small fish that were uh, purplish pinkish. And then there were some goldfish like gold, but they were probably fish fry of a larger species and smaller, but they still had the, the actual meat in them and scales. And uh, a guy, Alan Grafham actually in uh, Tucson at the Fossil and Gem Show down there, took a look at him at like two o'clock in the morning and He's the one that under a microscope, and he's the one that said he started screaming and yelling and said, "My God, there's there's meat in these things and blah blah." So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought about doing it. Yeah, we we were. I got to go get dropped off, and um, it's quite a ways in, so it's got to be a pretty early deal. So it'll either be tomorrow or it'll be early next week. Yeah. as we go through and feel free to ask any questions that you have in the live chat um and robert or i or whoever else is coming in here it looks like we got summer lowry is coming in too so i'll be bringing her in here can you hear us hello Hi. Yep, i made it <laughs> sorry i had to open up in a different browser it wasn't uh letting it open for some reason that's okay. I was explaining to everybody. We're we always have some stragglers. 
<laughs> totally. You know, Howie? Well, Robert was just recounting about his, he just had an amazing find where they found some, some fossilized remains that still had like, actual blood vessels <laughs> in the big zone. It was amazing. But, <laughs> um, but each of us have something kind of different we want to probably talk about. And we're, I was explaining to everybody kind of what the forum is on the C4C podcast. So we just kind of go in a circle and each uh, researcher, investigator usually has something that they're into for that week and something's been going on or they've been researching uh, this or that. And we, we sort of just uh, go around in a circle and talk about what's new and what's uh, interesting in the cryptid world. So we're gonna open up with Robert and see what he's, he's planning on some expeditions, I believe. Yeah, um, you know, the fossil stuff, that's that's a portion of income. And as well, you know, since it's a controversial site, uh, gaining more and more insight to what could have uh, happened to preserve, you know, creatures that are supposed to be 380 million years old, you know, their soft tissues and things. But um, besides that, yeah, we're going to start delving quite a bit back into ancient history and advanced ancient cultural sites here in America that, um, that just were pretty well off the map. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of a lot of hints on a lot of different places now, like, um, you know, they have all the megalith sites and they, they will have mud fossil and things sites that um, are actually all, you know, they all have in common what they have in common. And the um, I, or I would say the common denominator, or the origin and what they are, you know, is eluding most people. So we're going to start going back into these locations I've been into before and then a few new ones and um, go ahead and crack these doors open. Because in the days that we did most of, well, 99% of the exploration into this stuff, um, there wasn't an internet yet. And, you know, so, and there was film cameras and, and right. it, wasn't, it wasn't like today where you could take 200 pictures in a day. You know, you had two rolls okay. of film and getting them developed to break the bank. And, you know, that might be, you know, all together, either 24 or 36 pictures. So Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah it's a god, yeah. Whole different story than, yeah. than back then. It's amazing. Yeah, and I want to revisit sites that um there's a couple there's i want to revisit not only the dinosaur man connection sites that we know about um and you know i've already i've been showing some of those recently and um right. people kind of flip out because they don't know we even do that stuff and they just see us from the bigfoot of the or the crypto uh cool. world and it all it all runs together as far as i'm concerned it's all information that you know right. the, the world authority knows about that that is that is life changing it changes the whole paradigm and um so it all fits in the same basket but uh yeah. you know the it, i wouldn't say ancient alien things but the uh, other species reptoid alien whatever they are deals and the man connection and the dinosaur connection and and then as well uh into the bigfoot stuff there are, this is one i'd really like to to do in the future is there's a ruin in arizona that has a glyph panel that almost nobody knows about the glyph panel and it actually depicts an entire battle scene between Bigfoot type creatures and the Native Americans. And it wow. it features one sing single Bigfoot creature in the center of the whole panel that's like three feet tall and drawn very much like a monster. It's real cool. And wow. then um, there's another glyph right next to him that's an actual <laughs> scale drawing face to face between a native with a bow and a Bigfoot creature. And then it's got fight scenes all around it. There used to be a real big, big, big bone burn pile there about eight or ten foot tall and 20 foot long and probably 12 feet wide um that was all burned bone of whatever it was and it was right below this battle scene of the glyph pot of the the scene and uh, now they i guess about 20 years ago they hauled off the bone pile but i've never seen anyone show the glyph or anything so i'd really like to to take oh, an, God, an, yeah. an adventure out there and take a good look now yeah that's a must, Robert. You've got to go document that. That's a huge find. If if you find it in that area, what tribe do you think you could ascribe that, uh, you know, that petroglyph to? Well, I mean, the the only name that even the natives there had for them was, you know, it's Anasazi. Oh, is it? So okay. it's just the ancient one. So it's whichever band and bridge was right there. It's not geographically, it's not far from uh, ruins they call uh, Montezuma Castle and and okay. some of the other more famous ruins in central Arizona. So it's south of Sedona. It's in some really cool red rock country. Wow. It's real neat. Wow, that's really cool. 
Yeah, in case you guys didn't know, Robert does all kinds of amazing stuff and has found uh, not only is he an explorer, but he's also an accomplished treasure hunter. And I was going to ask you, is, now, is that the same area as the petroglyph that you posted of the uh, uh, T-Rex? Uh, no, that's that's a different area altogether. So oh, that so different. that glyph site's in central Arizona. This the all the other stuff with the dinos and people and everything that's all in New Mexico. Oh wow! Yeah, and it's it's funny because you know I've done done the code breakdown and and following you know uh, petroglyph maps. You know, you can read an archaeological breakdown on a lot of these symbols and codes, and they get pretty fanciful in their depictions. But then you can also go in there when someone shows you how to do it. And you put two and two together, and a lot of those are just maps that lead ruin to ruin to ruin to little domiciles. And like wow. the guy who taught me that, uh, he had mapped 2,500 ruins where Arizona State University was only aware of 500. And it was just wow. by following the spirals and things meant up, down, mm -hmm. go around. And they would, they would, would, it would actually be a topographical map, but it doesn't fit the topography mm -hmm. so much as it does the things you come across as you walk. Um, you know, you come to an edge, you know, and they'll show a curve. And it just means that when you can't go any farther straight, you turn and it shows you which way to turn. So, but, wow, but, uh, cool. yeah, so uh, these ancient glyph sites like that, I don't know. They also lead to some of the stuff we find because the natives, of course, it's all part of their history. So, sure, yeah. sure. That's crazy. Man, what that's that's amazing stuff. It's summer. What have you been up to? <laughs> Hi, I put myself on mute because I'm like, I don't want to make noise or anything. <laughs> but, um, How have you been doing okay. and what, what have you been into lately and, and what you got going on? Well, so um, I know that you, you know, most of Seahorsey knows that I kind of um, took uh, JC's um, death pretty um, hard. Uh, so I had to take a step back. I kind of um, was on hiatus there for up until recently. Sure. Um, and uh, I've been... Um, I've been in contact with his daughter, Sarah, and we have been trying to work on some stuff. Um, we're hoping to do, um, I'm going to put together some kind of expedition here because we're both in Washington state at the time for now. I mean, I'm going to be here. I don't know how long, but she's here, been here a while now. And uh, she's an awesome, awesome chick. Just crazy like her dad. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely. <awesome>. Yeah, <laughs> she's both, both she and, and Laura are awesome. Yeah, they're wonderful kids, really, though. They're, they're great people. Um, but, yeah, so uh, basically I have been just slowly, you know, putting my toe back in the water. <laughs> I just got to take things slow for me. Um, but uh, we're going to – I'm hoping to do some more. I've been – let me think before I speak here. I lately have been taking – asking people – their opinions on certain things like you know do they think you know big fitter sasquatch is interdimensional do, if so you know and stuff like that just their opinions on what some of the theories are and uh, i've been writing basically writing all that down um like you know i've interviewed family and friends and so on and so forth i want to get like kind of enough to uh to you know to, to do somewhat of a little um breakdown you know like this is what this amount of people would believe this or that it's cool to hear people's theories too. Um, yeah. And I don't know, my, mine have changed so dramatically just over the past couple of years. <laughs> it's just, you know, so it's cool to hear like, um, you know, people also, their theories change over time. You know, you learn more things or things are uh, disproven or proven and it's really cool. So I think it would be fun to, to delve kind of into the whole, um, uh, factor faked aspect of some of the the uh, the proof that the quote unquote proof that people had brung brung i don't think that's a word that people have been made available to you know the public like okay i have this video of this you know um just kind of going by um eyewitness testimony yeah that i mean that would be an interesting thing to do we did have a we had a really good <laughs> question pop up and i believe that's directed at robert since he's kind of the, the petroglyph expert do these when you see these hearts in these petroglyphs robert does that mean danger um no not necessarily if you see a heart that's been cracked uh, in half muted here i don't know why 
Thanks, Jack. Um, not necessarily. If you see a, a heart that's been cracked in half or it's made of two pieces of rock that are joined, um, then, yeah, that, that can signify a death trap. So, and that's considered, you know, it's a broken heart, you know, so you have the object of your heart's desire and, that, and then it's a broken heart. But prime. I have a question for you, yeah. Robert. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I don't want to forget the, the heart thing you're talking about. Yeah. Isn't since you're an expert on uh, treasure hunting, you probably know about the, uh, I don't know, the, the superstitions, <laughs> superstitious mountains, superstition mountains. Yeah. Isn't one of those um, uh, supposed clues or whatever to that it's, mine, a broken heart? Uh, well, or am it, I thinking? no, it, it's a heart that goes into a map and it also does have death trap symbology to that as well. So it's a stone heart that fits inside of a stone map that are called the Peralta tablets. <laughs> Um, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm so out of the loop right no, now. You're good. They're associated with the superstitions, and that's what everyone thinks they go, but um, they, they're they not. They go to a different site entirely. And, um, yeah, we, we with the help of my archaeologist who did 90% of the field work and the alignment mapping and stuff, we actually discovered the site that they go to. Um, but we didn't use the tablets to get there. We had broke this site and then learned – um, about some of the detailed information with the tablets and realize that's what we found. But to just to finish that thought, so a stone mm -hmm. heart means, a heart in general in code is a drawn back bow. And you'll notice why do we have the shape of a heart? Okay, and it actually fits an ancient template as well. So it's it's the rendition or that, it's almost a metaphor, but so we are, our heart's desire when we're hunting a kill or, or going after something is a heart shot. And we look at the heart, we say, well, where did this symbol, it doesn't look like any form of heart, so where do, where do we get that and why is it attributed? And that's because of the, the ancient, the hunting with a bow. So if you take a, a recurve bow and you draw it back, it makes a heart. And so it's actually, oh, yeah. majority of the time, it's, it's, it's either, if it's a glyph and it's on a wall, it usually indicates um, a, a type of treasure by a certain group of people. Um, mark treasure trails and monuments that way but if it's a stone heart then it's actually an alignment tool and you'd use you you do just like you're drawing back a bow and you fire a line from the tip through the lobes and continue that way on and for years treasure hunters thought you follow the tip because they didn't understand what the heart actually meant and uh, but it's also due to mm -hmm. line of perspective so if you have to be standing in the right location to be able to imagine that line so Wow, that's, that's crazy. very interesting. Yeah, and we have Ron Shaw has joined us. Can you hear me, Ron? All right. Now, Ron, uh, I don't know. Most people may not know, but uh, JC was working with Ron up on his property. He's had some pretty profound dog man interaction. Um, and JC uh, brought his son up there, John, even, and, and they did some interesting work. So. There's Mark Para calling, so he must be having some kind of problem. <laughs> but um, Ron, what have you been up to? And have you had any more activity like, you know, in the last however long? I've got a, I've got a wad. So um, I've been working right now, driving, making money, getting the house and bills paid. So, um. Yeah, but the Allura and Crow and the Warden are still running the boot, running around and causing mayhem. That's what they do. So, but no, uh, my neighbor's gotten a lot of, gotten a lot of troubles going on over there. So, we'll just leave it at that. How's yeah, it going there? Uh, you know, it's been going good. Um, so you've you've got three critters basically then and what what are their names so everybody knows uh crow allura and sergeant and sergeant. Or warden or whoever want or everybody's got a different name for the big brown one right <laughs> yeah. so that's great well i'm glad that you joined us and can be telling us about ongoing you know stuff in minnesota there as well yeah then, far north southern canada yeah yeah you're way way up there so, um, I got to answer Mark here and see what he's doing. I will bow out while you guys. Are
Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Yeah, that's no fair. I wanted to hear what, what, what Mark, hey, Mark. had to say. J Jack, we want to eavesdrop. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, Jack. Mark shouldn't get away with this whole covert call. He should have to face the music here. Yeah, stand yeah, up. So. He's on the wrong link. Hang on a minute. Tell, tell him you can't mute. Oh, I don't think he can hear me anymore. Well, how you doing, Ron? Nice to meet you. You're doing pretty good, dude. How are you guys doing? Yeah, and, and Summer, I'm, I know you took uh, the JC's passing pretty hard. And, uh, sorry about that. It hit a lot of people pretty rough. And so good to see yeah, you. Was... Good to see you're back in the in the swing of things. <laughs> he, he was well, a good you. guy, bro. He was a person good, man. And yeah. I just want to help carry on this, carry on his research and he was like a big brother to me, a mentor and a brother and a friend. That's it. I know we need to carry all this forward. You know, there was there was a real good intent, focus, serious, um, you know, beyond the hobby level going on. So I think that mm -hmm. we, we need to definitely keep that up if, in JC's memory, yeah. if nothing else. Absolutely, could, I agree. That dude could live in the woods on a, on a sauce packet. <laughs> I, oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He was, no, he was, he was a good good. friend. <laughs> he, and Mark, yeah. Mark was yeah, anyone, anyone, right. anyone talks crap about him, they better dig their own freaking hole. Oh, yeah. Well, That's what I'm saying. Choir at, on this trail. But Mark was uh, <laughs> trying to log in with all of us on by calling me on Facebook. <laughs> 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 did you set did you send him a link i'm sure you did oh yeah it's in, it in, our group. It's in the group chat too though so i mean yeah, the, isn't the, he he's in there no, man, i know. had trouble too though it wouldn't open in um it was opening in like a secondary browser for some reason so i just had to copy and paste it and put it in chrome and then it would open but i'm not very tech savvy at all and i'm just on my phone so right well we're right. actually we're actually simulcasting this over on the kx channel too so Cool. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah, is my sound okay? I, I mean, I'm I'm yeah. using a. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good. I was because before when I would do radio shows and stuff, I didn't have like the proper mic, and oh my gosh, just looking back and listening to some of it, I'm just like horrified. Like I can't believe. No, the, vol is, the uh, volume's great. You're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been uh, God for some reason. Well, I know what reason, but this past week. Um, I, I saw some video footage and it was taken by a gentleman who was a really, really long way uh, from the, the subject that he was filming. And I take it, I say gentleman, I don't know if it was a man or a woman who took this video. It was very, very interesting. And so from uh, some of this equipment they have now, you can just zoom in. Like, it's just amazing, like a crater on the moon. Well, this person who took this video zoomed all the way up into the this mountainous area that uh, is off of their you know uh outdoor porch or whatever it's up to a point and on this point you see this gigantic bipedal creature standing there and it's obvious that it's a big but there's no way that thing was a cue but if you see the video you know what i mean you can probably still find it out there somewhere if i can find it i'll post it but and then all of a sudden this thing um while they're focusing in on it it reaches up into the tree and pulls itself up into the tree and is just you know seems to be gone like that and so it got me thinking you know here's a creature if this is exactly what it appeared to be an actual footage of one of these creatures from a very long distance away doing something um you know in its behavioral patterns that it would normally do if it if it didn't know it was being watched and it climbs up into a tree and that, that brought to question in my mind is this um something that they do more often than what the average researcher like myself you know out there for years and years and years I, I never even thought to look up into a tree i do now of course but um it's one of those questions should we as researchers be looking up in the trees as much as we're looking down on the ground for physical evidence i suppose i mean personally i'm like the most situationally aware person that i've ever met 
I'm like kind of annoying sometimes, but I just, I don't know. I've always had this, like I, I have, I have like military family. And so like, I know what condition yellow is. If you're in the military, you kind of know it's a relaxed alert state. You stay in all the time and it's stressful, but like, I don't know. So I always look up and down, but I'm not necessarily looking for something in the trees, but I don't know. It's just part of my surroundings. So it comes natural to me, but most people don't do that. Uh, from what I've seen, it's, uh, you know, you have to almost imagine fish, but they don't fly in the water. So in other words, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, if, if it's a 3D world to them and if it's advantageous to go up, sideways, over, down, they just do it at free will. We we look at, and I guess a lot of creatures are that way, even if they're only semi-aboreal, you know. It's just if it, if they can do it, they'll do it. And, you know, we've seen lots and lots of where youngers have left, you know, because we, we have a lot of clays in these areas we, we work, and a lot of times there's moisture, so when the younger ones are running around the clays and stuff, then they'll, we'll see where they'll go up trees and lay hand and foot marks. And, and, um, and, you know, they just, they'll go right up a 40 foot trunk of a tree, you know, without even using the branches, just goes right up it. And that's the youngers. And then I think, you know, we've seen evidence of big ones being in trees that have actually damaged some of the trees. And then we've seen real big cottonwoods and they'll lay over in these river systems. And when they're huge, they'll get in them and, and actually pull them down in places and stuff. And it looks like over time, they just keep reusing them and they'll wear, wear all the bark off and the tree will continue to grow. And, and it's just the weight, you know, of their, their repeated activity, you know, has an effect. So in other words, they'll get, you know, low in trees too, even five, 10 feet off the ground, just to use those as probably to, you know, perch on or whatever. Right. Yeah. And that, um, <clears throat> that, I mean, just to, described perfectly one of the photographs I've got from an, I, I, an eyewitness that um, sent me some recently. And in two of the photographs, it shows what appears to be a small creature right up in the, I would guess you would say the crux of the tree, right where it begins to branch off into the big branch is kind of where you would be able to sustain a lot of weight. And uh, I don't know, something that uh, I, I sort of cross-connected to a case of a guy named Skip Roman who recounts how he and his family were <laughs> That's good shit. We lost you, Jack. All I hear is little kid music. What in the world is that? <laughs> Are you watching cartoons? Yeah, it's probably the deep state, right? I can't hear anybody. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's, there we go. No, that's funny. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can. It sounded I, like Rugrats or something in the back. I don't All know. Right. I don't know what now, that was. That was great yeah. though. That was there we go. You heard it too, Ruth? Okay, I was like staring. I'm like, wait, yeah. what are we doing? That's this all I could hear. Awkward silence. I couldn't hear anybody <laughs> else. That's all I could hear was <laughs> me neither. Little kid music. It's so oh. weird. So uh, anyway, interference, guys. There, there was an eyewitness who's, who's many people probably know about, and this guy was out picking mushrooms with his family, and uh, he gets off by himself, and one of these a, a bigfoot fall he said fell out of a tree as hard as it could fall i mean he said that it hit the ground like a bag of cement like it didn't even try to break its fall and then he saw one arm go out and another arm go out and it pushed itself up and it started running at him and he took mm -hmm. off and um and so it was one of those incidents where i'm thinking oh my god so here's one in a tree and i just saw one in a video go up in a tree and this eyewitness just sent me one of a picture kind of in the crux of the tree and i'm I'm wondering if from now on I'm going to be like this when I'm out in the field, you know, from <laughs> yeah, tripping over stuff on the ground. Well, I've seen I've seen in <laughs> snow where the only way they could have done what they did was to go arboreal. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, yep. I mean, I've seen it too. So mm -hmm. that's no tr tracks on the ground whatsoever. R right? Yeah. Well, the tracks <laughs> for a couple of hundred feet, and then you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they just go to near a tree, and that's it. They're gone. So. But I mean, yeah. a, big, a big one, if you can imagine what a big monkey could do and then amp that up just a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's not just arm, yeah. it's a, not just arm reach with them. It's, it's physical, what the tree will tolerate because they could leap off a tree and yeah. leap sideways like it's no big deal, but will a tree handle it? So, but wow. I mean, yeah. you see pine trees get hit by a car six, you know, or three feet off the ground, they take a car impact 
and um, and just fold the car around the tree. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, if they want to leap through them and cruise through them, I don't see a problem. Because you know how it is. You can feel when something's going to take your weight or and you put sure. just enough to take it. I'm sure oh, they yeah. can dance through the trees like it's no big deal. Right. I mean, that's what, but that's what smaller monkeys do. I don't see why it would be any right. different if it was yeah. that, you know. And if they, know. if they can treat them like they do cliffs and cliff walls, um, cause I mean, they'll, they'll stay, they can run to a cliff wall and go up the cliff wall and stay at speed. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. and not yeah. even have a blink. And then you go look at the tracks where they did it. And it's like, my gosh, man, like yeah. I mean, a free climber <laughs> would poo, you know, and, and yeah. you know, dance up that stuff uh-uh. like it's nothing, you know. Yeah, climbing nope. ability is amazing. Ron, did you have something to throw in on uh, on that question about them using trees? Oh, yeah. Well, no, both of them, all of them go up trees. I was like, I watched Allura <laughs> run up a tree the first time I seen her. We used to call her the bitch until Kimmy named her Allura. <laughs> My little sister said, you can't call him. She's going to be mean. Don't call her that. You know, type thing. So you got to be nice to them. But yeah, they spend time upstairs you know mm-hmm. up in the trees and they will go back and forth and you remind me right now so much of jc i'm sorry i have to interrupt i'm like tr- i'm like tripping out a little bit it's cool i've never spoke with you rob i'm sorry it's nice to meet you <laughs> officially you're reminding me jc just some of the conversations we'd have you know just drinking in the campfire and he just anyway i'm sorry yeah. hey, does he not does he not just a little, it's a crazy weird. i'm like it's weird. I like it. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it makes no, me he happy. Was, he was a good man, a very good man. Absolutely. I wish I could have met yeah. him a lot sooner. But yep. no, we had one time on, on in my property, I got 200 acres up north in northern Minnesota. And we'd, we'd stay down. We walked out and had my, my German Shepherd, Gunther, as a pup. Mm. And he was alerting and showing us something running around. And so we just sat there in the middle of a bunch of elephant grass. Or like a tall reed grass, and the whole time he was growling and he was hiding between me and JC. And in the morning, this is where the sunglasses story comes into effect. So in the in the morning, we got up. He would lost his sunglasses. We slide over his frames, and we got up and looked looked all over. But where we were laying in the long grass, and where Gunter was hiding in the middle of us, there's about a three foot wall. Of grass that had been stopped down but you were seeing where something had crawled up next to us and watched us all night so that was pretty spooky and then probably about a month or so later i remember yeah when that happened to you guys jc was telling me about it yeah and then like a couple like like a month or so later he was coming up we're gonna do a concealed carry class from my place and he was still asking about where his sunglasses were his cover over his my over ones uh-huh. and uh i said like, i don't know i haven't seen him well i jumped in he was probably about an hour out of town so i jumped in the shower and i was making coffee and get some food on the table and stuff like that and i come out of the shower and his glasses were sitting right there on the table wow that's... and there was some of the that weird white powder it was Weird little clay. It's the Nargles. Really? The Nargles wow. took them, I tell you. <laughs> but then we had, we also got the little people. Yeah. Up north of my house. <laughs> the, some pictures up there. Yep. So, oh, I don't like that. That happens to me all the time. Oh, I just can't. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, the, the little people <laughs> photograph. That's amazing. We'll have to, we'll, we'll show that and have you, mm. have you explain that whole expedition on, on one of these shows upcoming here. We never did. Uh, we started we started camping out in the house on the sun porch because something peed on his tent in the middle of the night, and it wasn't my dog. <laughs> it was a big dog, a big one. Yeah, that's good. And it's done. We ended up burning in that tent. I remember when that happened. He couldn't take it. He was like, "No, I'm gonna sleep on the porch from now on." Yeah, he was, and then someone was tapping on the glass and stared at him, and that window was like twelve feet off the ground, dude. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just take a picture of the house. You see the scratch marks on the glass and the frost. Yeah, it's amazing. There was all kinds of just amazing activity that you guys were having. 
Uh, it says, Linda B., can you ask Rob if he knows about the Aztec Gold, presumably in Utah? The Aztec- what, like the Utah Mountains range or what? Where does it come from? No, in Utah, the state. Uh, huh. The Aztec Bowl? Uh, gold. Oh, Aztec Gold. You know, I'm not, not one particular cache of Aztec Gold. I'm aware of Aztec... Um, activity in utah quite a bit matter of fact the hoven weep um would have actually that's the modern archaeological title for the group of native americans that occupied that area that we know from research were just basically the northern miners and not the extreme northern miners but the northern gold miners so they even had other metals being mined even farther north toward the midwest but they were uh it's some of the locations they were mining for the montezuma empire and so vicariously it would have been um and it, it so it would have been aztec in nature and that would have been an outlying uh, satellite mining area so it's not surprising that there would be uh, some type of legendary attribution to aztec you know gold in utah we we consider a lot of the older native mined gold aztec gold that would be in utah new mexico um, southern colorado and uh, northern and central arizona Wow, that's fascinating. I love I love the history of all of that. And um, well, we're coming up on well, we're forty two over. Uh, did anybody want to add anything on this evening's podcast? How to reach you? How to um, whatever? <clears throat> you guys go. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> no, I I'm just look. I'm I'm really. I'm happy to be here right now, period. I mean, last week I, so I just got over COVID recently and um, I'm still having issues um, with my lung capacity at this point, but every like couple of days I'll I'll wake up in the middle of the night or whenever and I can't talk. It's weird and I don't know how to explain it. (laughs) And I'm assuming it's due to COVID, getting over COVID, but I have an inhaler, but it just wasn't working. So I just, I felt like, I felt so bad I couldn't be there, but I think it was for the better. I don't think I was ready, but I'm just happy that that um, people are here to carry on with C4C. I think it's a big deal. I mean, a lot of us put a lot of our years of our life into it, and you know, we take it seriously, whether we joke about it or not. I mean, it was something that you know, it's somebody's legacy, and we have to we have to respect that, you know. And I appreciate all of you guys for being a part of that, and uh, I just can't wait to see what what comes. You know what I mean? I would I would love to see us branch out and like have a you know how like <laughs> I'm just gonna give this as an example because I can't think of anything other but like the zeitgeist movement there's like by state by city by co- whatever by coast I would like to do something like that with C4C I think it would be really cool like have expedition teams in specific locations that kind of um you know branch out not branch out but you know kind of report on situations and yeah. it's just I think it's cool there's so it's such a big network of, of us that I don't see why that wouldn't be a, you know hard to do really just a matter of doing it absolutely and we're all one big Mm -hmm. c4c family and um that reminds me i did want to give an update but we do have a couple of uh new members in oklahoma and uh brooke edwards and brody edwards who by the way is an ex uh correctional officer they were out blasting for deer uh coming up it was going to be black powder the next day and they were out glassing for deer in mcintosh county which is a pretty rough area and they're right on the edge of a wood line where they were you know kind of crouched down and hidden out for a long period of time they didn't what's interesting is they didn't find any fresh like deer sign like fresh prints or fresh scat or anything like that but this wood line's right in front of a big clear-cut area and as they popped up to exit the area because they thought it wouldn't be any good for deer hunting they got some kind they got a big big scream come across the clear cut from the other wood line and uh you know brooke is an ex-marine and uh, man there's been a hunter her whole life she said it scared her to her bones and i've never heard her you know say something like that before so they've got it pen marked and it's something that an area that will will mark for uh you know, to go back to. So, um, Ron, did you have to add last minute? Um, I don't know. Uh, what's uh, okay? This whole podcast you're gonna do now is—is is it gonna be like a weekly thing or? 
Yep, every Wednesday night, it'll be at the same time, same place right here. And C4C members right now, everybody will get the link and you just join in and we just have a nice round table about all things crypto. So, yeah. And it's going to be a, a, a focused a focus on one subject or one cryptid or just whatever's happened during the week? Yeah, just whatever has you know, we can talk about a myriad of subjects. So if you got one thing Yay. Before, about that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, with Robert's, Robert's expertise there on making bug out vehicles and yeah, exactly. Like and <laughs> exactly. I've been following this for a little bit on my there. And it's, it's, it's got this you know. thing, the Tesla going on there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I don't mean there is new cell, dude. Uh, yep, his <laughs> reputation as a genius, tech genius, proceeds. I mean, Robert, how about you? You got anything else? That's a t that's a pretty tough one to follow with a reputation like that. Jeez. That's not a good thing at all because then you have to try to live up to it. So I don't know where I was ever wise showing anyone I could do anything. The um, and don't expect too much. I really just take wild shots in the dark, and about ninety nine percent of them happen to hit, and I don't ask questions. So right. that's, that's kind of how it is. No. Um, yeah. you know, I get stumped all the time. So, but, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot in the future and, um, and that's why I'm, I'm real happy to be carrying on C4C and memory Jack or, or, and, uh, put all that back in, in position and get things, you know, uh, rolling forward. So, um, that'll be really, really cool. I kind of would like to do it as kind of a, of a I was going to say kind of uh, hijacked on top of our stuff, you know, so what KX does, I'd love to, you know, be wearing that flag and that banner the entire time as, as in a, in a memory situation, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, so, cause yeah. I mean, all of us have our own diverse research teams and, and we have our methodologies and our ways to do it. And then we come together. Right. And I think it'd be right. nice to just mm -hmm. cumulatively fly that C4C flag, you know, right alongside yeah. the KX. So happy to do it. Cheers yeah, to that. Yeah. Lot, cheers. Cheers to that. I couldn't agree more. And, um, and the, I, I couldn't have said it any better. So, yeah. Yeah, it'll def year, definitely year. one we fly. It's like the, you know, POW flag or whatever. But the, um, the PIA. <laughs> so, the, um, now we're going to have a lot of things flowing out here, hopefully, into our channel. And, I, mm -hmm. and I'm really happy that we kind of come together. Um, I see other places and other things doing this, especially like uh, you mentioned Elon Musk or whatever. Well, you see all the people that get together and culminate a final product and they're all diverse. They do their own thing, but they all share. And this kind of a collaboration is super, super important. And it's not about getting likes and getting hits and trying to do anything like that. But is it as much as it is every single person that you know is out there <clears> liking <throat> or whatever is someone that you know you got a message to. And, yeah. you know, I mean, you're, if you're, you're not. You're, sorry. No, go ahead. Go you're ahead. not true. You, you're not truly. I I was always taught you're not truly like doing your due diligence or really researching something thoroughly if you don't look at every aspect possible. Yeah. Instead of looking at one or two sides, you have to do so much. You know, yeah. you, you got to dig deep. But I think that's super. That's. I mean, I love that there's so many different opinions between <clears throat> all of us. So. Well, and it's getting. You know, the that's the whole thing about JC. The the analytical side to JC was was awesome you know he liked to look at little mm -hmm. points of fact and that's he let the fact demonstrate what that was without a whole lot of hype or bs put into it and um mm -hmm. and it, coming together not in collaborative ideas from our own perspectives is important with our research but as well to get words out because why is anybody doing this other than to try to lift the veil for other people so that you know right i mean they see the reality behind the reality and which is much mm -hmm. more has much more majesty and still has tons of wonder and not everything's been discovered and and you know we're just on the yeah. on the doorstep of of some of the biggest right. mysteries there ever were is finally right. coming to light it's not like they there's powers that be in the normal socio or sociological view and a lot of it's because of people's fears um, they love to believe everything's comfy and in place and we finally got it mm -hmm. down and that's that and now when you watch shows we're watching shows about the same things but you know that's the wonder thing of the internet so let's use it you know let's collaborate let's share each other's mm -hmm. stuff let's get the voice to grow like they do in other genres you know so yeah yeah i think it's that's fabulous absolutely and, and, uh, i could not be happier more excited about the future of where c4c is going to head from here and 
uh, yeah. this combination of, of minds, thoughts, theories, ideas, and, and expertise is something I think that uh, C4C will always be a cut above. So. Mm -hmm. But everybody out there, thanks for coming this evening. And uh, this is what our third podcast, live C4C podcast. So I guess we are actually here to stay. You can't get rid of us now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks to everybody who said I, uh, that they hoped I feel better in the chat. I don't know how to chat while I'm yes, on this thing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like super old as dirt. So I don't really know what I'm doing here. But thank you for your um, kind words. I appreciate it. I just tech. Hey. Yeah. I will cool. do that right now. There you go. Summer says thanks. And everybody, you guys have a great night. And uh, we'll see you next week. Enjoyed it. Thank you, Jack. Summer, Ron, right. we'll see you guys. All right. See you yeah. guys. Ditto. Have a wonderful night, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, my viewers can still hear me, I'm sure. So um, let me check out the uh, stream over here and see how that went. I hope everything was flying. Okay, so we get a little bit of soundtrack going in the background here, probably. Okay, so how was that, everybody? You guys jam on that? Um, it's off on my end now. I know you probably the lag I'm watching on the screen hasn't even made it to you guys yet. Let's see if my camera will fire back up. Kind of doubt it. Nope. Okay, so that was fun, you guys. Um, I want to thank everybody for showing up this evening. These are, for me, this is, these are kind of short, uh, short broadcasts. We're used to doing such long broadcasts in general that, uh, but it was good. I mean, it's good. That's a great group of people to be a part of. You know, JC Johnson brought me into the C4C crowd and it was amazing. And uh, I always felt, more than privileged to have been a part of those studies with him um, right there after the Erickson project working for University of New Mexico and um, that'll always be a, a real proud memories for me and that'll be kind of cool to carry that forth with um, Jack there and everybody from C4C and the Paranormal Intelligence Agency and uh, KX kind of hopping on the same bandwagon so if you're watching this and you have not ever seen us before or if you have and you haven't liked our video please do um we could use all the help we can get we are shadow banned unbelievably and if you want to see that just search our youtube channel and see what happens it won't show up until you literally type it all in and hit the search bar then it won't come up in recommendations so and um, we could use all the help we can get uh, subscribers is great but if you subscribe you know and we and we need that because it helps not only our numbers and get done so we can have more features on youtube but it also bumps the algorithm and keeps it uh, more on the list so now the only thing is that please subscribers check to make sure you're still subscribed check to make sure the notifications are still on I'm getting letter after letter saying the notifications are turned off over and over and people even write me and say hey I've subscribed to your channel several times and you are gone you they keep taking away the subscription so we're, as we put more content out there we really need to get the word out about the truth and the reality of the things we're about to bring to the table and um, we could use all help we can get so i'm gonna let this run off i'm gonna jam down the the chat thread real quick boy i had a lot of great people in here um world bigfoot radio dude i wrote you um uh, you i'm ready to do your deal so when i had some pre-existing arranged engagements before we ever went to Michigan and then after we got back we happened to be in the middle of a move and it wasn't set up and then we got that sickness and then we had to heal from that and get everything together and so now I'm back around and I'm, I'm just doing them in line of what I had backed up and uh, you're next in line buddy so hit me up we wrote you the other day email I don't know if you got it or not but um, yeah just let me know and we'll get that set up 
and then I've still got to do Lost Cryptids Conservancy. I got to do She Squatchers. Um, I think, um, well, there's a couple more. So, but it was good to be here tonight. Don't want to take everybody's time. Thanks for showing up, and we're gonna rock and roll out of here. Thank you. <laughs>